Hello and welcome to today's tutorial on J-trees. Now, a J-tree, as you may well be aware, is that structure that you can use when navigating your file system on your computer. It's a visual display of all the folders um, under a particular drive and you can click on one folder and it will expand and show those folders underneath it and you can drill all your way down until you get to the bottom. So, that's what we're going to take a look at today. Now, interestingly enough, the J-Tree swing object is different from your more basic swing objects um, and it tends to work in comparison with another object, the, the data model object. But today we're going to take a look at getting started with using a J-Tree. So we're going to take a look at the simple way we can set up a J-Tree to display in our desktop application. So let's go take a look at how we create our basic J-Tree. First we'll switch to Eclipse and let's start by creating a new project. <coughs> Excuse me. And we will call this project JTree Basic. And We'll have it in Java 1.7 and we'll just accept the rest of the project defaults. And that will create our project structure over here. Next, we will create a new Java class. And we will put that in the examples. J tree package and we'll give it a name. Let's call this class J tree oh, example one. And what we are going to do is we are going to select the superclass J frame. So basically our class will inherit um, from JFrame, it will extend JFrame and that will make it easier to create a GUI application as you'll see in a while. We also want to have a main method so we will select public static void main. That's all we need to do so we will press the finish button and that will create the stub of our class. Now for this simple example we will use a string of values to generate our J-tree. So I'm going to do a final string array called toppings and I'm going to initialize it with some, with some values. We'll have cheese as a topping. Uh, Pepperoni as pepperoni as a topping, and one more. We'll have uh, black olives as a topping. So that's our string array, and we are going to use that to create our J tree. Next, we will turn our attention to starting up our application. So, when the application runs, the main method will be um, invoked, and we will use this main method to display a window frame taking advantage of the fact that we've extended J frame. So first off we will kick we will um, create a new runnable and we'll post it to the event queue. Using invoke later. So we're going to have new runnable, open close parentheses, then we will define our new runnable by opening the curly brackets, and then we will define the one method we need to, which is public 
void run because it's a method. We will because it's a method. We'll put open and close parentheses there, and then open the curly braces to define what we want our new method to do. And then we will close our curly braces at the end, and then we'll close the curly braces for the new runnable object that we're defining and then we will close the invoke later method and we will put a semicolon on the end <coughs> so we know that's the end of the statement so we are going to create an instance of this class jtree example one which we'll call app and it will equal new tree example one using D and we will use the default constructor for that and now we've got an object of this class we can do app set default close operation now the set default close operation method <coughs> is something that jframe defines so we, we can make use of that and then we're going to use a JFrame constant, which is going to be exit on close, which will basically terminate our thread when we close. And then we're going to do app set title, and we'll give it some title, which will be mm, JTree basic example next we're going to set the layout um, and because we have fairly basic requirements we're just going to do a new border layout and use the default constructor for that tidying up a few issues here. We'll import border layout and then we are going to do um, make our make our frame visible items, the objects, the containers in our frame so we just use up the space that they require. They they all have default sizes and it will just shrink to use the default sizes. So we can actually save this um, and then we have an error somewhere. Uh, one too many brackets, braces I'll get rid of some of this white space. I'll remove that task now. So we can save that and we can run this. And what we should get is just an empty frame. And then when we close the frame, it should terminate the thread. So there we are, there's our empty frame. You can see our thread is running down here. And I will terminate that, and you'll see our thread down here has now terminated. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another new class. Now, we're going to keep this class in the examples jtree package as well, but this time we're going to call the class tree panel one and we don't need to extend anything um, and we don't need to implement any interfaces so we're just going to press the finish button and create our stub now what we're going to do here is we're going to create 
a J tree object and we're going to add it onto a J panel object and then we're going to provide a method to return the J panel to our class um, that we just created earlier which will then add that J panel into the J frame. So private J panel to start off with uh, which I'll just call J panel for simplicity's sake. We use default constructor for that. And we better import that. And then we're going to have a J tree, uh, which we'll call tree one. And we will set that up later. Again, we'll import J tree. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to create a string array called options. The next thing we're going to do is create a constructor for this class. And this, cons this constructor is actually going to take an argument um, because we want to pass an array of strings that we defined earlier of our pizza types. So we'll just change that signature so that we say it requires an argument to be passed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our options array and we're simply going to assign it to the parameter the argument that we're passed. We don't have a need for it, but if you go to on to extend this, you may well have a need for it. Then we're going to create our J tree using our options array to create it. And then we're going to add our J tree, our tree one to our J panel. So now when we create an object of J tree panel one, this constructor will be called and we'll end up with a J tree that is um, added to a J panel. Now what we need to do is provide a, me a method of getting that J panel back to um, anybody who wants to use it. So we're going to create a public J panel get J panel takes no arguments and we're simply going to return our J panel. So that's all we need to do. We've created our J tree, we've put it on our panel, and we've now provided a way, a means of getting our panel back if anybody wants to use it. So we will go back to our first class now and into our main method. And just after we set our border layout, we are now going to make use of this class we've just created. So we're going to go J tree panel one and call it my tree. And it's going to equal a new J tree panel 1 and it's going to be past our toppings now what I've gone and done is I've gone and put this string in the wrong place um, because this main method is static what we need is a static variable um, so it needs to sit in there. I mean, there are other ways we could have done it, but that's what I had intended to do. So we've now created our J tree panel one using the toppings as a as a, passed as an argument. So all we need to do now is get back our um, panel and add it to our frame. So there's the add, and now what we'll do is we will do this was my tree. Just simply call the get panel. And if we save that and run it, we 
we can see that we have our cheese, pepperoni and black olives J tree object. So, as we've seen from today's tutorial, you can create a J tree using just a simple string array. If you're interested, you can go to our website and download all the source code for this tutorial um, to save yourselves typing it in. And if you've got any comments or any questions, feel free to email us. Again, go to the website, you'll find an email address, and you can send it in. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you once again for watching. This was another tutorial brought to you by Software Pulse.